So some people struggle with understanding how to use Figma components, component properties and variants. In this video, I will explain everything you need to know and understand about it so you can start using them in your design. So let's get right into it. I would like us to first start with understanding what a design system is and how it connects to components, component properties and then variants. A design system encompasses various elements that help maintain consistency and efficiency in design workflows. So I got this design system from Figma community. You can find it here if you can come to here, explore community, then you can see all of that. If you see low design system, right? Okay, so this is the name right, you can find in design community. I think it's quite detailed. It has different collection of everything you need for a design. So let me explain what a design system is like basically what we're doing. So you know how, let's say you want to cook a meal, but you want to cook it in different parts, but same meal. You know the process of you, maybe if you're using fish, you get to debone the fish, keep the fish aside, maybe divide it into four places. Let's say you're cooking four different pots of soup, right? maybe the same soup but you're cooking them like into four different pots though you debone your fish you cut your vegetables you place them aside into different four places you know the system of getting everything you need to make that food ready just so you achieve some kind of let's say you know how you cook party rice to or party, party food and they get to taste the same thing you have the same measurements for your salt your maggi and all of that right so it's the same thing with design system you're trying to create some form of consistency across your design so let's say if you want to use a button let's say a call to action like buy now right so across all your designs you have to use the same button across all your designs buy now they have to be the same color the same shape if it's a primary color you have to maintain the same um, corner radius and all of that so the process of defining all the things that you need maybe accessibility guidelines your color your typography iconography scaling all of those things is what like you can find in your design system so you can see this one you can see the accessibility guidelines here you can see colors they've already created these brown colors right They've already defined all of it. The scaling system, that's the spacing system, has all been de defined. This is most likely like a four-point scaling system. You also have the typography. It has been defined. The kind of font that they're going to use has been defined. You know, the iconography may be like a guideline on how to use icons. Then if you go ahead to... Um, let's go ahead to components for starters you could see you have the accordions it has been defined here these are the accordions that you have here let's go back to components you see cards too have been defined if you so all you have to do is so when you're done defining all this thing like setting them creating them and then adding them as a component to your system once you're designing you just get to take it from your assets and then paste it where you want it to be then how does this design system have to do with components and variants and all of that as i said a design system encompasses various elements that help maintain consistency and efficiency in design workflow so components variants and component properties are like integral part of a design system not just that design system consists of other several elements like i have shown you here which is a style guide like the comprehensive document outlining visual elements such as colors typography just like i have shown you here let's go back to components here so it encompasses this it has the iconography the spacing all of those things right it also has like pattern template your accessibility guidelines content guidelines design tokens all of these things are most likely what you're going to be using when you're making your design. But everything depends on the design you're trying to implement. That will determine the kind of design system you're going to come up with. But today, we're going to focus on components, component properties, and variants. So how do they relate to each other? All right. so let's start with components. Components are a fundamental building blocks of a design system. They represent reusable elements like buttons, input fields, um, icons, cards, right? 
So while component properties are properties of your component that allows you to assign names and values within your components, don't worry, we're going to look at all of that in Figma, but I just wanted us to have like a holistic understanding of how all these things are con connected. Okay. Looking at variants now, variants are different versions or states of a component that share the same basic structure, but have variations in properties such as size, colors, or content. So they allow for flexibility within a component in which enables us like we designers to create variations like different button styles or card layouts while maintaining consistencies. I'm not going to go much into variables, right? We're going to have another tutorial for that. But let's go right into Figma and I'm going to show you everything that I have been trying to explain. So now this is a component that you're looking at, right? I created a component here. I also created one here. Components have this purple border around it and it allows you to change multiple instances of that component with a single move, right? So once you create a component, if you go to your asset panel here, you can see all the components that you have created here and you can make use of them, right? You can drag out an instance of it and you reuse it in your design. That's basically what component is. Now, moving on to variants. If you move over to this section now, you're gonna see different variants of the first component that I've created, right? I give giving it a different color and a different style from the first one, but it's a variant of the first one, right? And you can just easily click on it or create a different variant another variant by just clicking on this plus sign here to add another variant and you can make adjustments to the color so this is what variant is here now this is another different like variant like you could have different um different variants of a component right so for for starters is like the default button so we have primary buttons with no icons primary buttons with icons primary secondary buttons with no icon and all of them in different states the default state disabled press and hover state right but this way of creating this component set or your reusable elements is Figma has advanced more than that and introduced what we call component properties, right? Which allows us to do it in a more simpler way. So I'm going to show you how to create all of this and how to use the create components, component properties and variants right here. So let's start from the beginning. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is to click T on my keyboard and I'm going to type button. So I'm trying to create a button. Just to make it responsive, I'm going to give it an auto layout by hitting Shift A on my keyboard. So I'm going to come to this auto layout section here, this setting here, and I'm going to make the horizontal padding, I'm going to give it a 32. For the vertical padding, I'm going to give it half of the um, horizontal padding, which is a 16. All right, so I'm going to add a fill color here. Let's go ahead and use a blue. So I'm going to go ahead and make this a bold, right? So let's give this um, button a corner radius. Let's give it a, let's give it an A12. No, that's too much. Let's give it an eight. I think a four is okay. All right. So we have created a responsive button in the sense that if I add more test here, it's going to respond and still maintain the same vertical and horizontal padding that I've given to it. Now, what we're going to do is then create a component. To create a component, you're going to come to this section here. This icon here, just click on it and you, you turn it into a component. Now, this is a component. This purple board is around it indicates that it's a component. Now, I'm going to rename it here so that we'll be able to identify it in our asset panel. So, I'm going to call it button for you. Right, so let's go to the asset panel here and we're going to find that button for you. you can see it here so this is an instance of our um of our component now you can place this one in any of your design but we're not stopping here we want to create different instances of this button like the hover state the disabled state all of that what i'm going to do is i'm going to come to this plus section here this icon here and i'm going to click on add a variant 
So once you click on add a variant, automatically places it in this frame for you and add another button similar to the first one that you have. Now it's now left for us to add as much variant as we want. Remember I did this here. Remember I did this one here, like this variant. I gave it like a button, um, primary button with icon, with no icons, primary buttons with icons and secondary buttons and all of those, right? So what I'm going to do is to show you exactly how I'm going to simplify the process and in a smarter way, which is by using um, component properties, all right? So let's go ahead and create more variants here. I'm going to add more variants. Let's say this is the default state. So for the default state, let's leave it at this color. I'm just going to come and change this color. Let's say this is the press state. I'm going to add another few color on it. So this one, let's say is the hover state. Let's just reduce the opacity some more. So when you hover around this, maybe the color changes to this. Then let's say a disabled state should be something close to this. All right, so which other state do we want to add to it? Over, press, disabled. I think we're good to go. So we've created all the swans now. Like there's the press states, the, the default states, the press states, over state, and the default state. So if you come to these sections here, you can see that you have this current variant. It's this is called this is property, right? And the first one is in default. The property is at default. So I'm going to change it to say this is the state at the state of the buttons, right? So this first one is left at default. If you click the drop down, you will see the different variant, variant, the second variant, the third variant, and the fourth variant. So I'm going to click on each of them. I'm going to call this one pressed, right? And I'm going to call this one over. Then I'm going to call this one disabled. Now this is what happens still in my asset pan um, section here. I'm going to drag out this instance of this button here. Now what we've created so far is you can see that automatically is on the default. If I want to change it, I just click the drop down, select pressed, right? Or hover or anything I want to do. All right. So what I want us to do is to look at this section again, right? What I did here. You can see that I created several instances here. The ones with the buttons, the ones without the buttons, for primary buttons, for secondary buttons, I did the same thing. So imagine I was creating like several instances, maybe um, a button with two icons, right? That means that this is going to be like a very large or file that I have going on here. So imagine I have so much, so many instances I wanted to create. So it's going to be like too much. I'm going to be doing a whole lot of calculation here. But we don't want to do that and that is where components properties come in so i'm just going to take all of this here and i'm going to copy it and i'm going to go back here and i'm going to paste it somewhere here just so we see what we're doing so i want a primary button with um okay we didn't even create a secondary button so let's increase this now i'm going to increase this here so I'm going to drag all of this and I'm going to create a secondary button. So for the secondary button, let's choose a normal color. Let's just, just, let just choose a random color. Let's say this is our secondary button. Then let's also click there. So this is the press date. Then this other one is our secondary for the hover states. I'm just going to reduce it. This other one, let's say this is the color this is the disabled states let's i think this is okay let's just work with this right this is the secondary buttons and this is the primary buttons here in different states right let's just go and bring the titles that we already have here i am going so that it's going to be easy for us So let's just arrange this very well. Let's move this one a bit and paste this ones here. Let's just make it like this. All right, I just created an auto layout and I made it. And I clicked on this vertical layout so that 
I want it to stay vertically. Alright, so how do we have it here? This is the fourth. Disabled is here. Over it here, pressed it here. Alright, so we have something. Right, so remember I want a primary button with icon, secondary button with icon, and secondary button with no icons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on here and I'm just going to go to hero icons. I'm going to bring in some icons now. I have my hero icon here, so I'm going to bring in some icons. Let's just bring in this one. Let's also bring in this one. So I'm just going to bring in random icons just to illustrate all of this to you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change these icons. I want them to be like a component too. So I'm going to click on all of each of it, select each of it, and I'm going to come here and say create multiple components. Right, so they created all of them. They created, they created individual component for all of it, right? I have that. Now, if you see my asset panel here, all these icons are laid out here. I'm going to take one of this and I'm going to chuck it here, right here. Let's change the color to white. I have this with a, I have this with an icon. Let's also do the same. Let me put this here. I'm going to place this here. But here, this, okay, so these are eight. I'm going to do the same for all of this. Do the same from all of this i'm just dragging and dropping but let's try and change the colors here sample colors to white all right so all of these ones now have buttons in them okay so this other one too let's add buttons in it because they are like our second i'm just going to click on this Control c Control v on this Control v on each of it then I'm going to hold on to shift key, select all of it and come to this color section and change everything to white. Right. So this particular one, this variant here that I have for the second secondary button, I haven't named them. You can see it's reading state eight state. So this one, I'm going to name it as mid secondary default. This other one, let's name it secondary mm, pressed. So for this one, let's name it secondary um, hover. So for this one, let's name it secondary um, disabled. All right. So if you come to this instance here now, you can still select maybe secondary disabled, secondary press, secondary default. Now, where prop component properties come now? So without the component properties, we'll be having all of this here. We'll be having all these instances here where I get to create buttons with icons and buttons without icons, right? But we don't need to do all of that. I just need you to understand this component properties. We have three different component properties. Number one, we have the Boolean property. This allows you to turn something on and off, true or false, yes or no. Let's try it for the test future. All right. So I'm going to select one of the tests here. I'm just going to hold on to com my command or option. Click on the test. Now, because of the multi edit feature, which Figma just introduced, I'm going to put the link to the video so you can watch it if you've not watched it. I can easily select every element of variant that is the same thing on this board. Now, if I click on this multi edit variant, I am going to it's going to select every instance where they find similar characteristics like where you have these buttons It's going to select everything so with this feature now if you come to this layer section here you can see create a boolean property so if i click on it i will say let me just say test let's just name it test probably test so the value means what the value that is showing now on the components that we have do you want it to stay true or do you want it to stay false so let me show you how it's going to behave so if i click on create property now you get to see this test thing that shows here so 
let's still use this our instance here so you can see it already has a toggle this toggle thing so if i toggle off the text it means remove the test so you can see because we use an auto layout to create this thing it's going to be responsive so it's going to shrink removing the test still maintaining the spacing system that we gave it right so this is the beauty of using the components property now we just looked at how the boolean property works we can also apply that for icons here so i'm going to click on this multi edit variant here it's going to select every variant of this icon here so if i come to this layer section here i'm going i can see apply the boolean property just click on create property i'll say button show button okay let's just leave it at button right so also if i click on this you can toggle on and off maybe you you want to the test with the button or you don't want the text or you want the text and you don't want the button right now you can see that we have created all these instances here all these variants here primary button with no icon now you see you have your primary button no icon if you also want to create primary button with icon all you have to do is to toggle on the icon from here all right so let's look at the second component property which is a test property now this test property allows you to change the text right from within the side panel let me show you how it works so i am going to select this test now again and i'm going to click on this multi edit variant here then i am going to come towards this text here this text section here if you click on this icon here you're going to see create test property so i am going to name it to let's call it text let's call it writing <laughs> maybe i just want to write something there so i'm going to click on create property so i'm going to deselect the multi edit feature here now what this does is this now if i click this is our instance here if i click on it remember that i dragged out this instance from the properties panel here from the asset panel so if you come to asset you're going to see this property these components that we've created here so i just dragged it here this is what i did so for this one if you click on it based on what we've written here what it does is let's say you have you have this button on uh, a design you're working on and you want to change the text it's not like you want to change the main component or change the text across everything just on this button so if i come to this place i can just type let's say hello dreams it's going to update immediately right just for this instance here so that is how it works right so let's look at the third um, type of component properties which is the swap instance now what the swap instance does is let's say you have an icon within your component you know we created different icons we brought in different icons and we um, created a component and is now under our asset so let's say you have different icons in your library you have lots of icons and you want to be able to change it to a pre-selected icon let's say this icon i want to change it here this instance that we have here i want to change it i don't want to use this arrow icon i don't and i don't want to go to my main component and start changing everything no i don't want to do that i just want to change it there now this swap instance helps us to do it so what i'm going to do i'm going to select this icon again and i'm going to click on this multi variant here then i am going to come to this section here this section that you see here this you're going to click on this create instance swap property once you click click on it right um what should we name it um change icon i'm just going to name it change icon i already named one icon so i'm going to change change icon so this value is asking you what like on the component that we already have here this is our component that we're creating what do you want it to be like if i change this here if i change it to this right it's going to adjust don't worry you're going to see it then this preferred values let's say you have so much uh, um components in your library or so much icon in your library right it allows you to choose the one you are going to work with on that project so if i select this one this is already selected if i select this select this select this select this these are the ones that are going to be given to me as option when i want to swap my icons so i'm going to click on create a property remember that i changed the value here 
I changed it to this um, clipboard um, icon here, this icon that you have here. It was this arrow before, but I changed it here just so you see how it's going to work. So I'm going to click on create icon. So immediately I create icon because I changed the value to this icon, this main component is going to change. Same across all the instances that it came with. All right. But let me show you what the swap instance did for our project. Right. You can see, remember I titled the um, properties that I added to this component at change icon, right? So if I click on the drop down now for this, but I'm remember I select, I'm selecting this particular instance here. If I click on this, it's automatically going to change my icon just on this one and not on the whole components. So this is how it works. Just a recap again. Remember, we created an icon from the scratch. We use an auto layout. Shift A to create the icon so that it's going to be responsive. Then I showed you different variants, how to add variants on your design, which is by clicking um, before we added the first variant. If you check the top here, you will see add variants. You can also add a variant by clicking this plot sign and add another variant. Variant is like you want to create different variations of what, of <laughs> what you're designing, right? So we created the variants, we created different variants here. You can see this is the default primary button. This is the second default primary button here. Yeah. But we didn't go ahead to do the boring side. We used the motor edit tool to easily customize what we're working on across the designs, right? And we use the component property just to make our work easier. So rather than having all of this, we ended up having just all of this so i'm going to bring it to close here so you can see what we did all right so instead of having all these icons here remember this one has no icon but this one has icon and all of that what we did we shrunk it and made it just this number of um components that we have here just by using the component properties i hope this is clear if you found this video helpful please subscribe to my youtube channel see you next tutorial